Heads and Rockers. I'm Al Din. I'm with Underground Noise Webzine. This web is no, number 106. If you're not keeping your horns up for metal or rock, you're doing it completely wrong. And I have to tell you, it's the only way to do it. Today, I got the pleasure of interviewing Kyle Messick. He's from the band called Maimed, and he's also from Sewer Raw Records. Welcome to my show, Kyle. Glad you can join me today. Glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, you're welcome. The first question I would like to ask you is, how did you hear about Maimed, and how was it formed? What, what all can you tell me about it? Uh, well, we, we formed several years ago, uh, but uh, how I heard, heard about it, because the, the, uh, the main songwriter, his name is Tom, uh, he's put out a ton of quality projects at this point, but uh, he's located out of Wales. He was looking at, for a vocalist for his Brutal project. And so uh, I he, I was recommended to him by Costas that uh, runs Repulsive Echo out of Greece. And I tried out for it and he, he dug my vocals. And then uh, from there, I was like, no, nah, we, we can't have program drums. We got to get some real drums. So I, I hit up my uh, buddy Justin from Severed Head Shop, amazing drummer. Uh, and he was happy to do it. Uh, that, that actually wasn't our original drummer. I, I hit up another drummer first. But Justin ended up with the uh, final spot. And then uh, after we did the EP, uh, Ian, who is also from Severed Head Shop, he joined on bass. So we've got an upcoming full length that should be coming out towards the end of the year. And that will be the first one that has uh, Ian on bass rather than Tom playing both uh, guitar and bass. That's really cool. Because I was listening to Torrential Gore a couple of days ago. And the song that stood out to be my favorite is actually the title track, That and Sledgehammer. Yeah, that yeah. I think those are some of the best ones uh those are my favorites too i think uh followed slightly by flush sculpture but uh yeah we've got a full length it's pretty much completely recorded now i hope people will really enjoy that too uh it's definitely still plenty brutal uh, i don't want to announce too much on that yet but we'll have some uh uh big names from death metal and grind as guest appearances on there uh but uh yeah finally it'll be a full length from us uh, and a good for good amount of variety between the songs too and some other catchy numbers like such hammer too. So uh, hopefully uh, people will enjoy that when I, we uh, drop it here and start announcing stuff about it in the coming months. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it myself. Cause I'm a, I'm a big fan nowadays. Cause I never right. listened to me before until like I said a few days ago and I was like, Holy crap. They remind me of so many different bands. One of them would have to be methadone abortion clinic. I don't know if you know who they are. I think I've heard the name, but yeah, I haven't explicitly heard them. But but Tom's our main songwriter, so he pulls influences from everywhere, from like New York Brutal Death to uh, uh, a, a lot of grind stuff. Sledgehammer in particular sounds a bit like Mortician. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, it could be that that was one of his influences, too. I'm not sure. Yeah, every time I see your posts on Facebook, I'm saying that's the man with the hugest CD collection I've seen in America. Yeah. Uh, I, I think definitely some uh, like Ken from Ken's Death Metal Crypt, he, he's got more than me. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've got over 5,000 CDs uh, and most of those are Death Metal. Uh, do, do you put up the video for this too? Yeah. I, I could try to uh, just, just uh, walk in there for a moment to uh, get an idea of it, but then I'll come back here just to keep that signal going. But but uh, yeah, I'm definitely a big lover of death metal. This is my little cave here and where I do some some of this stuff for sewer rot in here. But a ton of sign stuff too. But uh, and a ton of stuff that's not quite organized yet as well too. It's not enough space. I'll need to upgrade my uh, sort of facility here eventually. Just living in an apartment right now. Yeah, I can definitely understand that. I was about to say that's quite a few CDs. Are those on bookcases? Uh, they're uh, they're those cases that you can either make them for books or CDs or whatever. They're they're, they're probably too small to really use books for, but uh, but they're CD cases. Yeah, uh, standard ones you can get off Amazon or from Walmart or something. Nothing fancy about the cases themselves. That's really cool. My next question would be, name your top five favorite death metal bands. That's tricky uh, because there, there's a, a lot of bands I love, but most bands have, have like put out like a weaker album, right? Uh, and so I, I couldn't pick a favorite, but I, I could maybe pick some 
you said five, right? So uh, Gore Guts is one of my favorites. I love the dissonant death metal stuff. That's very polarizing for some people. Uh, I love uh, Ackercock out of uh, the United Kingdom, very avant-garde sort of stuff. Uh, I, I like tons of brutal death. The early suffocation stuff's all amazing, of course. Uh, they've always been a big influence on me. Um, other favorites. I, I'm, I'm sure I'll forget some things. Mitochondrion I like quite a bit. They haven't put out anything new in a while. They're from Canada. They're another Disso Death one. Um, like a lot of old school stuff, too. But uh, in, in terms of brutal death, uh, Payamia and uh, Discords, both Discords, U.S. and Mexico. I love both. But uh, I, I mean, I, I could do a top 200, 300 bands list easily. Uh, but th there's a few just thrown out there. Uh, Mithras from the UK, really cool band too. Pretty creative project. Yeah, that's awesome. I haven't listened to Ak Akercock in quite a while. Are they still together? Yeah, I think they just reunited. When was it? I don't know, six, seven, eight years ago. Uh, I lived in England for a few years and I was actually fortunate enough to see them live and meet the uh, just about everybody in that band uh, while I was out there. So that, that was really cool because they were a bucket list, uh, bucket list band for me. But yeah, they're still around. Their last album was a little bit softer, but uh, uh, still, yeah, still a cool band that's always doing something new with every album. So I always uh, get excited to hear what they do. That's how I feel about Crisian because I've never seen Crisian until I saw him last March. And I was mind blown, dude. I never expected three dudes just to jump up on stage and produce so much sound. Yeah, great, great act uh, from Brazil, right? Isn't that yeah. where they're from? Yeah, I, I've seen them a few times, but not not recently. But yeah, that, they're a killer band for sure, too. Yeah, I found out that they're all brothers, although Alex uses the father's last name instead of Kolesny. Yeah. I was like, wow, that's kind of strange. We got a Camargo and two Kolesnys. How can they all be brothers? Are they are they triplets? I mean, Max and Moises, they kind of look alike a little, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking, man, what happened? Who's oldest? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they were really nice guys when I got to meet them. Killer, some, yeah. Some of the cool yeah. dudes. I'm sorry, what were you about to say? Oh, no, I said I, I've uh, I've not met them. I haven't had the pleasure, but uh, I've seen them live a few times. Uh, yeah, they're really cool dudes, man. Yeah. Yeah, they like to just stand up on stage and beat on their chest and they're always telling everybody in the crowd, if it wasn't for you, there's no fucking show. And it's like, well, of course not, you know, but we're here. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you've got a situation like that band Threaten, right, where they booked that huge UK tour and it was all just kind of a scam. And so they played the dates and there was no one there for the audience. And so, like, the promoters, right, just took a loss. And it was just, uh, yeah, a really funny situation, but strange that it occurred. Yeah, situations like that can be easily avoided, but at the same time, sometimes it's not so preventable. What would you uh, say about, like, how to prevent a disaster from happening? Like, before uh, the show? like if it gets canceled or whatever? Well, I, I used to book uh, the occasional show as a promoter back when I lived in Indiana. And uh, I booked the likes of, like, Broken Hope and Morpheus the Sims and uh, Week Weekend Nachos. Uh, November's doom. Uh, but the, that's always a risky thing, right? And I, I'd say it, it's hard to be able to uh, prevent a loss. And that there's people, that, there's ways that people try to do it unethically, right? Like pay to play and stuff like that. I, I strongly oppose any of that. I, I think it always needs to come down to the promoter. Uh, but, but hopefully the promoter is trying very hard to uh, uh, put out on social media, right, and put flyers around at other shows and things and trying to pl promote it. And hopefully the bands are also trying to promote it too, but hopefully don't have that uh, financial requirement that the pay-to-play stuff has trying to sell tickets or something. I, I don't think that should fall on the band, but it, it's always a risk. And uh, it was really difficult as as we hit the COVID-19 era, right, too. And then uh, that, that became even harder. But it seems like shows are really coming back more. Festivals are coming back more. People are hungry to go out to shows. So uh, it, it might be a little better, a bit of a better time now. But of course, we lost a lot of venues after COVID-19, too, that, that couldn't uh, stay open during all of that. So right now, 
uh, one of the difficulties is just rebuilding. There's a lot of cities that don't have uh, extreme metal venues right now. Uh, but where there are, I, I think people are still getting a lot of uh, success with their uh, even their small shows, right? As we're just hungry to get back out there and hear live music again. But it's always a risk. Yeah, that's so true. It's kind of weird because I haven't been to a show, like I said, since March. So I'm trying to space them out a little bit, see which ones I really want to go to. Right. Yeah. And then I'm starved for shows out here. I, I live close to the Savannah in Georgia. I, I'm actually on the South Carolina side, but there's there's not a lot of extreme metal here. There's one venue that books shows. It, it's a younger guy uh, and it, it's mostly younger age shows, too. Uh, but there's I've been here two years now and there's only ever been uh, two death metal shows booked here. <laughs> and so. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I'm just waiting for more to happen, but uh, so I, I've had to travel to really see any live music, unfortunately. But that's just another example, right? Uh, maybe there's the audience here for things, but uh, there, there still has to be somebody local willing to take those chances, especially as we're uh, just coming out of COVID and uh, might not even have venues to be able to host this stuff. Like out here, we've got low elevation, right? So there's no such thing as a basement show. And uh, I definitely miss that sort of thing, but uh, yeah. That's awesome. You know, you don't live too far from me. I'm here in Macon, Georgia. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If we ever run into each other in person, we'll have to get a drink or something or food or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. We can make that happen. Most definitely, dude. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. For sure. I'm down. I'm totally down myself, man. What would you like to tell me about Sewer Rock Records? How many bands do you have on that roster? Oh, I, I've never counted them, uh, but uh, we're, we're a death metal only label. We're based in Los Angeles uh, and, and we kind of have two things we specialize in. Uh, so plenty of old school death from uh, newer bands. But one of the things we've been uh, increasingly known for is putting out classic reissues. So uh, things that uh, I've adored, maybe I've had in my collection, but uh, nobody else can buy that stuff. Maybe it's available online on Discogs for some insane price. Uh, but we're trying to bring a lot of that stuff to new listeners. And I, I think we've been successful in that. One of our most celebrated releases would be that we reissued the uh, first two albums from uh, Intestine Ballism from uh, Japan. So a very aggressive sort of old school death metal act, but with a lot of melody in there, too, that made them a lot uh, very unique because it wasn't like Gothenburg scenes or a melody. It was just uh, something in contrast to the more aggressive stuff. Uh, but uh, th we even did a second pressing of that uh, first uh, album because it was so in demand uh, all over the world because uh, it, it hadn't been repressed since the 90s in a, a proper sort of format across both tape and uh, CD. And uh, so we, we've also recently put out a, a compilation from uh, Mortiscold, old school death metal band from Wisconsin that include four different recordings from 1990 on it. And it was a pleasure uh, working with them. Uh, we haven't put out the formal announcement yet, but our next release will be a reissue of uh, the self-titled album by uh, Victims of Internal Decay, which is another old school U.S. death metal album that came out in the 90s. And that we're going to put their 1989 demo on it as uh, bonus tracks on the CD, which has never been on CD. So that's one of the things that's just been so rewarding about Sewer Rot and uh, why we all like doing it, because it, it's four of us that run Sewer Rot and all of us play in death metal bands, too. So I think that helps with the quality control and uh, why we're digging up all of these old school gems that meant a lot to us. Uh, but uh, we're, I, I think we're good at bringing death metal to a, a new generation of fans and also uh, putting out for uh, people that have been around a while, too, that maybe don't have those original presses anymore. They can get them again from us. And I, I'm, the, I'm the person that does all the graphic design, too. So I, I make sure I work with the bands closely, that everybody's happy with everything. I, I put in all the old school flyers, all the old school photos I can when we're doing those reissues. So it's always a, a lush sort of package worth uh, having rather than just a digital file. That sounds like a lot of fun putting all the artwork together. Yeah, yeah, definitely time consuming, uh, but uh, I, I enjoy doing it. Yeah, and, uh, and that's one of the things that sets us apart and any other label apart, right, is that uh, uh, I, I do the layout for everything. So it all has a certain look. 
that uh, and I, I think our stuff looks really good too if you pull out the, any of the cds from our last few releases there it's a very slick looking stuff and it, sometimes even when our layouts are barren i'll even uh because i've done art myself for a lot of years too i'll even add a piece and put it in there or make something for a band and uh just just to have a little something more in that layout for them that's cool my next question for you about sewer route records is who came up with the name and why did you choose it uh, the the founder was Chris uh, Chris from uh, Encoffinized, uh, currently of it Infested. Uh, he started Sewer Rot. I, I think it largely started because he used to be on Maggot Stomp. He wasn't really happy with how things were going, and so he kind of broke off and uh, started his own thing. And then from there, uh, Frank from uh, Soul Devourment. I also made the logo for Soul Devourment. Uh, he joined after uh, after uh, Chris had, had founded it. And then uh, Andrew from Coagulate, uh, he's our uh, third, he was the third member. And then I joined as the fourth because initially I was kind of a hired gun. They were hiring me to uh, do a lot of the graphic design and stuff. And then it just made sense for me to come in as a full-time uh, co-owner of it. And uh, so, yeah, that's kind of how it started. I'm not sure how Chris got the name Sewer Rot. Uh I, I know the logo itself was the, the original logo we had was inspired by deteriorate, uh, but then we uh, we changed it up a little bit to uh, uh, make it a little bit more different from what their logo was. But I, I mean, even from those roots, uh, it's all old school death metal. Uh, the, that's where our hearts are. Uh, but we put out other stuff too, death grind, uh, but but all on the un, under the umbrella of uh, death metal or or diso death we had one charnel grounds that was a really successful release for us that was a great one uh but yeah i don't know the the uh, origin of the name i'll have to ask chris about that okay that's cool whatever happened to your go team man used to be real long and now it's gone yeah yeah i, I used to have a uh a giant beard right that uh, was below my waist and uh but uh i was out in england for a few years after I finished up school there, I, I got my doctorate. My doctorate was actually in psychology on heavy metal culture. So that's, uh, I'm one of the few psychologists kind of the in the world that studies heavy metal from a scientific perspective. But I was trying to find a permanent position, right? It's very competitive. Uh, and when I graduated was right when the COVID stuff was hitting too. And so it was very hard to find a job. And I just thought that maybe there would be uh, maybe I'd have a better chance not having the the, the giant beard. And uh, during COVID, right, I was just living in a basement. I was teaching classes occasionally from there, not interacting with anyone uh, in person. And so it also just kind of made sense to not go through all that work to maintain the giant beard during that era of living in a basement and seeing no one. It's so much quicker to not have a giant beard and doing all the conditioning and brushing and all that. And so uh, I, I did get a permanent job uh, and uh, that, that has really helped. Uh, uh, but uh, so maybe eventually I'll, I'll grow the uh, beard back, but uh, that, that's the reason that it's gone. But uh, I know a lot of people are still sad that it's gone. So I apologize uh, for that. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, that's quite the flim flam, you know what I mean? Yeah. People will ask me every now and again, they're like, what the fuck's a flim flam? I'm like this, you like that fucker? I'm like, oh, <laughs> So yeah. <laughs> it throws them off guard. How long did it take you to grow that thing, though? Oh, I I think it was around seven years. And at that point, I was just maintaining it at that length instead of uh, continuing to cut it. But uh, I mean, even a few years before that, I had long hair. But uh, my, my genetics said that wasn't the way to go as I was getting the skullet and stuff. But there's been a few times where I've drastically changed my look and uh so just losing the beard was another uh excuse me another step in kind of the evolution of uh my appearance i guess but it works for me being a teacher but uh you know i, I still have all the death metal stuff my connection's better here so we're sitting in the room with all my uh uh death metal t-shirts right over the years but that's killer dude that's killer i could see you rocking out with a mohawk man yeah maybe if i could grow hair up here still I, i'd be down to try more but uh, yeah, no, it'd be like just the skull thing, maybe like what the psychoptic guy used to have. He had a rat tail that was real long in the back. I don't want to do that. <laughs> you know, it's funny that you bring up psychoptic. I see that they're doing a tour with Decrepit Birth this year. 
Yeah, that'll be a killer uh, tour, especially if anybody likes a more technical sort of death metal, right? Uh, in terms of Psychroptic, I'm, I'm more partial to the, the Chalky era. Those first two albums, those are some of my favorite albums. Uh, but still a very talented band. Uh, just just have a little more struggle getting into the vocals now. But Decrepit Birth are always killer. I've, I've got everything they've put out. Yeah, Decrepit Birth's one amazing band, definitely alive. I've never seen Psychroptic, but... As you were saying, the first two albums, The Isle of Disenchantment and The Scepter of the Ancients, yeah, those two albums are definitely the best. And I've never heard a vocalist do like maybe six to ten different vocal sounds. It sounds like he's belching sometimes. Sometimes That's... it sounds like he's actually singing or growling or even screaming. Yeah. So many different sounds that come out of that dude. Like, who is this guy? How much weed yeah, did you get okay. before doing this? You'll, you'll get that on the new Maimed album, too, because Chalky's always been one of my inspirations. I, I love the idea of just switching between different vocal styles on a dime like like he does. Uh, it, and I, I've seen Psychroptic live. I, I never saw them with Chalky, but one of the times I saw them, one of my favorite songs is Color Asleep. And so I was just shouting at him over and over to play that song. And then uh, the vocalist goes, well, we weren't going to play this, but fuck it. And then they played Color Asleep. And I feel like... <laughs> Ask them the entire set to play it but uh but i was satisfied anyway because uh, yeah that's a killer jam and they don't play a lot of stuff from the chalky era anymore yeah that's why i pointed at you when you said the color of sleep because that hit the nail right on the head man that's my favorite yeah. song the Coptic too dude yeah, yeah those vocal patterns are insane some of my favorites ever for sure i mean how do you sustain your energy kyle when you're doing different vocal sounds like how do you know when to be really high pitched or really low or, you know, like I said, that burping type sound. Yeah. And it, it's, it's trickier, but it's kind of like clean singing the different stuff too, that you want to kind of match the music some. So if it's like a really brutal sort of riff, right, I'll go into the lowest registers and get very guttural with it. Uh, if it's a more melodic sort of part, maybe I'll do more of a mid range growl. Uh, and then the screams, uh, I'll use those for more of an accent. I, I don't like, uh, uh, so much when bands scream out entire lines. I, I like when it's just a little bit of uh, here and there, like the old school Cannibal Corpse or something, just as a, a, an accent in there. Uh, but it, it can be difficult, yeah, maintaining breath and all of that. Uh, and especially if somebody's going to tour. We haven't toured with MAME, but uh, if you got to do that sort of thing night after night. Because if you're doing different vocal styles, it's attacking different parts of your your throat and things. And, and so uh, you, you don't want one area to get too raw and all of that. So you, you do have to pace yourself. And so one thing I learned when I was playing with other bands, too, is that uh, if we're going to practice the day before a show or something, I wouldn't do five hours of growling. That would tear up my throat too much But to be able to do it the next day. So I'd maybe just speak the words or uh, even clean sing the words and save the gutturals for live so that I don't uh, yeah scratch up the throat real bad because it, it is. I think it's easier to do a full tour or something if you're just doing one guttural style, like if you're growling from your belly. But if you're doing throat stuff, you're doing inward stuff, you're doing outward stuff, uh, then that really begins to be hard to jump between those. So you, you have to pace yourself, I think. That definitely makes a lot of sense. And also stay hydrated. That's a good rule, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I always got to have water for sure. Uh, I, I've had a heat stroke at a few shows before, too, and that that's not fun, right? Just blacking out and losing control of your body. So uh, I, I'm a, a lot more careful now in terms of just always making sure I've got water, whatever I'm doing. So that's important for anybody at home watching, right? Stay hydrated when you're going to shows. Don't don't be a tough guy. Uh, watch your hearing, too. Wear plugs. Uh, you'll want that hearing later. We all have music. We want to hear it later on and not just a, a ringing sound at all times, right? Tonight us or something like that so hydration and uh hearing plugs yeah must for shows yeah tonight is sucks i know some people that deal with it and it's, it's constantly there and i'm just like well sorry that happened yet. yeah yeah you gotta take it serious you know can't have it too loud but it seems like the older we get we need to turn it up louder because we can't hear the damn thing <laughs> Yeah, turn up the CD player. What you? I can't hear what's being played. <laughs> you still want to be crushed by that guitar tone and all that. So yeah, it's tricky to find a balance. Exactly, man. Exactly. So how many different instruments do you play? Or are you just into vocals? Uh, I I've been a bass player for I think it's actually been about twenty years now. So that's my main instrument. 
Uh, I, I dabble in a little bit of other stuff. So when I initially started playing music, I was just putting out solo material because I couldn't find a band. So I had to teach myself a little bit on other instruments. And so I just was putting out really weird sort of avant-garde stuff. But uh, nowadays, I, I just uh, basically uh, stick to vocals. And uh, well, I play bass a lot, but not always active in a band. I, I've got a second band. Uh, I don't know if we even settled our name yet, but I might be doing bass and vocals on that album. Uh, but that won't be until after I finish up the maimed album. That's my uh, focus right now, uh, which, which is recorded. We're just uh, getting the guest appearances ready for that and then sending it off to mixing, and that'll be good to go. We've already got the artwork for it, too. Uh, Jason Barnett of uh, uh, Petrification has a very unique art style, and he's uh, uh, really catered to our uh, mythological, sort of gory, medieval style of uh, uh, lyrical content, Uh and and uh, so that'll be really cool when we can reveal that to people. It's a really elaborate piece he did for us that's pretty wild and, and very gory that follows the story of a it, it's a concept album. So it follows the story of the album that'll be a uh, involve a lot of yeah, gory battle and all that. Well, that's good to know. Well, Kyle, I've got four minutes left with you and I've only got a few last questions. Sure, sure. Um, what would you like to say to your fans out there? Well, keep supporting death metal, uh, whether it's through Sewer Rot, uh, hopefully you find something to like in my band name, too. If you like old school sort of New York style, groovy, brutal death, I, uh, keep keep your ears tuned to Sewer Rot. You'll hear an announcement eventually about that album coming out later in the year. Uh, if you like old school stuff, you want some reissues in your collection, keep uh, staying tuned to Sewer Rot Records. And uh, yeah, just in general, you, all of us are, are what keeps music alive, right? So uh, it's fine if you like the digital files, but uh, even if you're not buying physical media, CDs, tapes, whatever, uh, make sure you're buying the shirts, buying the merch, uh, giving tips at shows. Uh, support those bands because it is very, very expensive, especially nowadays, to be able to tour. And especially if you're seeing an international band, uh, uh, nobody's making a lot of money off death metal, right? So uh, do do your part and uh, keep supporting it. it. helps keep it alive. And, and thanks for everything you've contributed so far. And uh, hope to keep... Uh, serving you as a somebody that brings you the death metal that uh, is is so good and that you want that's killer dude my last question for you Kyle. do you have any last words for underground noise webzine no uh thanks so much for hitting me up uh us at sewer rot records uh really appreciate it uh, all of us at maimed also really appreciate it so uh we'll, we'll be happy to spread the word about uh the, the zine as well here too so uh j just thanks so much so uh, we, we all uh appreciate it and uh, appreciate what you do right these zines also help get a lot of that information out there uh it's one of the only ways you can get sort of underground interviews like this too right uh that, that aren't just with the big bands and the big magazines or whatever so zines are always very valuable for the scene a lot of great zines out there that still exist too a lot of people that even still get the print uh, zines and, and so that's been a cool part of metal's history too you know following tape trading and all of that just the the existence of those zines and so uh, thanks for everything you do and keeping metal alive keeping some of our history alive through uh keeping that uh zines alive right so uh yeah that, that's all i have to say about that i suppose uh, thank you you're welcome kyle thanks for giving me a portion of your time today sir yeah happy happy to do it so enjoy the rest of your day and the, uh, yeah, keep keep it metal. Stay brutal. <laughs> All right. <laughs>